one of the greatest blessings and favors upon a slave is when Allah Azza wa Jal prolongs his life and enable him to increase his reward. The greatest bliss a slave can have is that the longer he lives, the more he accumulates of reward and the higher he goes in rank in the scale of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal enables him to fill his days and nights with good deeds, actions by virtue of which he draws nearer to Allah Azza wa Jal. And contrary to that is a slave who spends his life negligent, heedless of the hereafter until he is struck by the calamity of death and regrets having wasted his life without utilizing his time properly in matters that benefit him on the day when he meets Allah Azza wa Jal. And he regrets that, but regret is of no avail. It's out of the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal that he facilitates for us seasons during which we can increase our rewards. We can fill the record of good deeds with more and more actions that will escalate our ranks on the day of judgment. And one of the greatest seasons is this season that we're living in right now, the month of Ramadan, a month of reward, expiation of sins, freeing of the fire of hell. Allah Azza wa Jal frees people from fire every day as the Prophet Sallallahu told us. There are people, on the other hand, who are deprived of this. Who spend Ramadan just like they spend any other month of the year. Who do not give it its due right. Who do not utilize their times, rather their seconds, in a proper manner. And their loss is worse than to be described with words. In the book of Al-Imam Al-Tirmidhi, and classified as authentic by Al-Albani, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, رَغِمَ أَنْفُ رَجُلٍ May this man be humbled and humiliated. Who is this man? And man here doesn't mean male. It refers to any Muslim, male or female. What is this description? What makes him deserving of this dua of the Prophet ﷺ against him? He said, he or she, who live until they reach Ramadan, and then Ramadan ends without them being forgiven. Well, if we don't utilize the time in Ramadan properly, then how do we expect this forgiveness to be achieved? And those who really know the value of Ramadan are those who are underground. Dead people would wish to come back and have enough time to say Astaghfirullah even once. These are people who appreciate it. We're heedless of that. Talha ibn Ubaidillah, one of the ten people promised Jannah by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa One of the first eight who embraced Islam. Radiyallahu anhu. Narrates the following story. And it is in the books of Imam 
Ahmed, Ibn Majah, Al Bayhaqi, and others, and it's classified as authentic by Al Albani. He said, Two men from the tribe of Bani, which is, tri which is a tribe that comes from Yemen, came to Medina as Muslims and lived there. So they were equal in this regard. They both put themselves under the disposal of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doing absolutely anything he wanted them to do. So it happened that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam dispatched one of them on a battle during which he was martyred, radiallahu anhu. Yet the other one was not dispatched and lived a year later, a year longer, and a year later he died. Normal death. So Talha said, I saw in my dream that we're standing at the door of Jannah. And then someone came out to call and perhaps it's a, an angel came out and called the one who died later, who died a normal death, and admitted him into Jannah first. And then another time, the second one was admitted in, and on the third time, they came to me and said, and said you stay behind, it's not time for you yet to enter Jannah radiallahu anhu he is the one about whom the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said man sarrahu an yandhura ila shaheedin yamshi ala al-ardi fal yandhur ila talhat ibn ubaidillah this is reported by a Tirmidhi classified as authentic by Al-Albani the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said whoever wants or wishes to look at a man from the people of Jannah who is a martyr Yet walking on earth now, then let him look at Talha ibn Ubaidillah. So Talha woke up and started narrating this uh, dream to the companions. So people became surprised. So this news reached the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So he came to them, and he said, "What make you?" What makes you astonished at what Talha is saying? They said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, the first one was martyred. And the second one died a normal death. So this was puzzling. He said, you find this surprising? They said, indeed. He said, and listen to this. He said, did he not live a year longer and reach Ramadan? And performed such and such number of sujood during this year? They said, yes indeed. He said, by Allah, the distance between their two ranks is like that or more than that between the heaven and earth. Meaning the one who died the normal death is higher in rank than that by that distance. Puzzling. Surprising. Yet, justification when known removes this. أَقُولُ مَا تَسْمَعُونَ وَأَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْأَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى ثم أما بعد. Scholars explain this hadith saying that these two companions رضي الله عنهم were equal with regards to the time they became Muslim. So they became Muslim together 
And with their hijrah, they performed hijrah together. And they put themselves under the disposal of the Prophet ﷺ together. And they both sincerely wanted to obtain shahada. One got it practically, and the second one got that reward by virtue of his sincere intention. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by At Tirmidhi and others classified as authentic by Al Albani. He said, Whoever wishes sincerely from his heart to be killed, meaning for the sake of Allah, and then he dies or gets killed, will be a shaheed, meaning in the scale of Allah. Then the second one, the one who died later, increased in addition to this, so they were equal up to that point. Now the second one had that year long of Salah and Ramadan. And we all know the virtue of Ramadan. And then died. And therefore that difference of acts of worship, especially Ramadan, made him deserving of this high rank. Higher than the first one. I stated this hadith so that we appreciate the blessing and favor of Allah Azza wa Jalla upon us that we've lived long enough to reach Ramadan. And so that we don't lose zeal, we don't weaken for the remaining second half of Ramadan. Rather, act more, perform more. And so that we don't stop expressing our gratitude, being thankful to Allah Azza wa Jal for making us reach this month. We must, we must take advantage of this favor because we can die now, we can die tomorrow, and we can complete the month. We don't know. Death doesn't take permission, does not require a visa, does not inform you, does not send you an SMS or WhatsApp. It just comes when time is due. So we must take advantage of this time. We must be sincere in our, ten, in our inten intentions to utilize the time remaining of Ramadan in drawing nearer to Allah. From now, have a sincere intention to Allah that the last 10 nights, for example, of Ramadan, you will do nothing but recitation, doing Qiyam, Tahajjud. If you die, you will have this sincere intention. It will benefit you like it benefit the companion radiallahu anhu. Our lives are nothing but time. The more time passes, the less time remain for us in this world. Ibn Mas'ud, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu said, I never regretted anything in my life more than regretting a day which has passed during which I did not increase in my acts of worship. Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu said, the one thing the people of Jannah would regret is not, uh, is spending time without mentioning Allah azza wa jal during that. So if there was a period of time they didn't mention of Allah, they would regret it then. Al-Hasan al-Basri, and listen to this. Al-Hasan al-Basri said, one of us needs to be more careful with regards to his time, protective of his time, more than one is over gold and silver. Because it's more precious. Ramadan is a jewel. 
but only few people, only some people are blessed to appreciate its value, its value and thus utilize it. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us amongst these people. اللهم اجعلنا في هذا الشهر المبارك من عتقائك من النار اللهم اعتق رقابنا من النار اللهم اعتق رقابنا من النار